uh, as we saw, I mean, the three, the three, uh, the three steps that you told us. Just yes, one second, I'll just go, I'll go back to it. Correct. Notice of removal to the speaker. Yes. Resolutions given to the governor and yes. the act of being sworn in as uh, CM. Correct. There's one step earlier, probably one one step which you can also add there, which was the governor's trust the vote of communication. I'm grateful, I'm grateful. Right. Now, four step there. Procedure. Suppose, uh, sub, uh, you know, notice of removal of the speaker, we are, we are not really called upon to adjudicate upon the validity of the. Yeah, okay. Except, except in Navam Arabia. Your lordship, if your lordship chooses to refer, would have that issue. Navam Arabia, if we choose. In the broad. No, no, I'm saying it arises. I'm not saying your lordship may have to for this case. I'm saying that's the core issue in. No, no, I'm saying well, it's, it's an issue. Which governor, the different. governor asked for a trust vote. Yes. Two ways of looking at it. Well, the governor had material to call for a trust vote, in which case a further issue would arise as to whether he was justified in calling upon Shinde to form the government. Pinpointing, picking out a person and saying... Picking out a person, because correct. even assuming that the governor had material to call for a trust vote, what is the basis for picking up Shinde? Second, that the governor had no material to ask for a trust vote. That there was no valid material at all That's on the basis question. of those three circumstances. That's a core question. And well, it's, uh, that goes to the heart of the matter. If I may digress for 30 seconds, Mr. Tushar Mehta was right when he quoted the couplet. But perhaps didn't realize that the second sentence applies against him. He quoted Bashir Bhadra to say, Chup rahe to galat fehmiyo aur galat fehmiya aur bhi badhi. Usne wo bhi suna jo mainne kaha nahi. Usne wo bhi suna jo mainne kaha nahi. Malas, the governor in his letter at 326 PDF <laughs> talks of a resolution to exit the government which doesn't exist at page 55 where the resolution is held there. So he's hearing things jo kaha nahi. The resolution doesn't say that we are exiting the government. Yes. So he heard something. We had said, wanted to. <laughs> well, I found a more appropriate one for Mr. Mehta. I found a more appropriate phase for Mr. Mehta. Was. Not Bashir. Bhatt. So the only question was whether there was a valid exercise of power by the governor to call for a trust vote. And if we, but what happens if we come to the conclusion that there was no valid exercise of power by the governor to call a trust vote? Everything falls. Everything falls is very... Uh, no, no, very I'll, be, I'll be dealing with Bama. That's the, actually, that's the core question. Your lordships is saved a lot of unnecessary exercise. If your lordship comes to that conclusion, plus follows Bomai. Which in any case is so then you, according to you, what? We reinstate uh, the... the just re of straight away, let me just change my tack and go to Bombay. But you resign, no? No, no. That's... I covered in my note directly. Five reasons. Just Shah asked me that one in the beginning. Your lordship asked me that. I Straight away answer. That is actually red herring. My resignation and not facing the Malad's uh, trust vote is irrelevant. That completely. But that's... Mr. No, Malad, I'll, I'll deal with it. So let me deal with it. Because... So let me deal with that. If you, it's like the court being told that you reinstate a government which has... No, no, Malad, it is... It's an acknowledgement by I, you. I hear your lordship loud and clear. It's a question asked earlier and it is actually a plausible looking thing but it's actually irrelevant. I'll show that in a minute. No, no, Mr. Kapsil. How can, just hypothetically, yes. Yes, yes. how can the court reinstate a chief minister who did not even face uh, the floor of test? Your lordship is not reinstating anybody. Your and what will, what will be the consequences? Your lordship is and should and does, and Bomai says it more graphically, restore status quo ante. We That's would. the meaning of a... But uh, Mr. Dr. Singh, it would have been a logical thing to do. That's where we are, you know, it would be a logical thing to do, provided you had lost the trust vote on the floor of the Lord assembly. Uh, Lord, should we just flag that? I mean, yeah, I because just, uh, then, clearly, you have been ousted from uh, power because of a trust vote which is set aside. Correct. Duty bound to satisfy Lord, and I believe well, that... Right. Now, our problem is, look at the look at the intellectual conundrum. Yes, yes. That it's not that you have been ousted from power... As a result of a trust vote which was wrongly summoned by the governor. You chose not to, you chose, you for whatever reason, you didn't want to face a well, trust I, vote. I, I face that squarely. Specific. Allow me, well, I'll change my sequence and come to this first right now. May I, well, because straight away your lordship's conscience should be satisfied. This is a red herring. It should not deter, should, will not deter in loyal lordships. If your lordship comes to the conclusion of the other one. Give me just five minutes on this. May I end the first part, well, 
that is well as this uh, affirmative and negative quote. Oh, yes, then that you with only one. With only <laughs> so well, let me end this first point by saying. Let me end the first point by asking myself a reverse question. What happens in my first point of uh, affirmative and negative if your lordships were to accept their interpretation? That's a good way of answering my Mellus proposition. Namely, your lordship will have nothing left in the tenth schedule. How does the lordship operate? Both the four step or the three step becomes the norm and will be followed in every case to defeat the tenth schedule. You got That's it. my first point. Second point on resignation. Now, Mellus. It. The most important thing is it's a prior challenge. The illegal act of the governor is a prior pending sub judicial challenge before the trust vote. So you are really saying that Mr. Uddhav Thakre resigned only because he was called upon by the governor to face a trust uh, vote. I'm grateful after I had filed a petition, after I had made it sub judice and after I had said this is completely unknown to law, don't allow it to go on. And you are frankly accepting the fact that well, you resigned because the trust vote was going to go against. When you do an illegal act, yeah. you, the consequence of that is known to me. The CM's participation or absence of participation would not dilute that fundamental illegality. If it's illegal, it's illegal. How, how does my non-participation validate the act of the governor is the core question. That's the correct legal answer. Today, the illegal government is running. There is no elections. Then, And the person who otherwise, suppose the Lordship holds the governor to be bad. Then a person not entitled to be holding the post, holding the post of chief minister. How can Malus, of all courts, the Supreme Court accept such illegality? Malus, if your lordship's, Malus, your lordship's powers are unique in this country, in that even your lordship's Malus, can go beyond the law. Not contrary to law, beyond the law. Then Malus, what's the point if the governor's actions are held to be illegal? Actually, your lordship's would be Malus, giving a Perik declaration and accepting that the illegality has borne the fruits of its illegality and people have enjoyed it. So I challenge Malus, a validity of an act. Let us say the governor's act. Let me say competence of a legislation. Let me say fundamental rights. Versus the eligibility of certain people to act under the act, to sit there and act. Your lordship under 189 protects the second, not the first. If the governor's action is bad, will 189 ever protect it, Malus? Mr. Malus, my learned friends, two of them argued at great length on 189. Did they answer the question? Ultimately, the core question, my lord, is just formulated either way, this way or that way. Is the governor valid or not valid? If your lordship holds him to be invalid, 189 comes only after your lordship holds something to be invalid. Otherwise, it doesn't come into play. It can be said in the context of the vote in the house. So, with respect to exactly. So, therefore, no, no. 189, your lordships can and may, and in this case, perhaps should, in the intervening period of seven, eight months, the decisions taken by an otherwise illegally constituted government may be valid under 189. That's the real commonsensical way of implementing it, Bullis. I am not suggesting that somebody's appointment is quashed, somebody's transfer is gone, somebody's policy decision, so what really government made is, a liquor policy, no, therefore that is gone. thing is that Article 189 recognizes a de facto doctrine. De facto doctrine. What the de facto doctrine does is to legitimize the acts of a authority okay. whose original appointment is found to be invalid. Subsequently found to Subsequently be invalid. Found Correct. Correct. But that does not validate the original appointment That's itself. The, or calling for the, so that goes back to the same thing. Willis. First act was what? The governor being approached, governor calling. The two others are consequences. Voting is a consequence of the governor's illegal act. So is the oath taking. If the original act is bad and your lordships can't validate it, then this will not validate the vote. Willis. The consequence is bad. The consequence of an illegal origin cannot validate the illegal origin. And similarly, so 189 cannot... Cons sorry. What you're saying is that in if the calling of the voting in the house itself is subject That's to... The, yeah. Just how my lords formulated, Malus, right or wrong, governor's action, A, no basis, and B, if basis, Malus, it is wrongly applied, etc. But that's affirmation of the house, right? Then what? I mean, I still have a... Government. Affirmation is coming. That's oh. this section. Bomai dealt with the affirmation. All oh, right. Oh. Bomai said, we hold something to be illegal. Let's kindly give you a minute. This is very interesting. But thereafter, parliament has approved it. Exactly the same thing. How can we quash it? Said, no, sorry. It will be quashed. So this is, Malus, the three points are covered. Prohibitory, affirmative, 189, and Malus, resignation. Now, what is the fourth point is this well, is prospective and retrospective of the EC. They're all important queries which fell from my Lord. My Lord, the Chief Justice asked this question more than once. Petition is filed on 19th July. 
सेवनटीन फेबर इज दर नाउ मेल दी ऑर्डर टू बी रेट्रोएक्टिव क्वेश्चन नंबर वन रेट्रोएक्टिव फ्रॉम वेन देर आर थ्री पॉसिबिलिटी रेट्रोस्पेक्टिविटीज लुक एट द कॉन्सिक्वेंस मेरे लॉर्डशिप डर होल्ड इट टू बी विदाउट थ्री वन इज it is retroactive from the date the shiv sena was recognized as a 29a political party that is 1990 or 92 i'm giving you three alternatives i'm not uh, because today i am the election commission i hold that this is the shiv sena if it is retroactive logically it should go to the date when 29a but let's leave that second it goes back to 21st june when this action started and third it goes to 19 july when the petition was filed there are only three possibilities malus in all of these the consequences would be that malus actually everything i would be guilty but i i am actually i i by i i mean people who have remained with yes. mr thakre i'm just using a phrase because there no other phrase available and people who have left now the people who have followed the 10th schedule and remained with mr thakre would be actually liable for disqualification if a lordship relates back that so a lordship would be giving a premium to those who follow the 10th schedule and the people who have not followed the 10th schedule will protect their disqualification also and disqualify me also whereas your lordships will not avoid the inevitable consequence by malus of course your lordship's words can always malus but it, that's the logical consequence of retroactivity they would make an arc of immunity for their own disqualification and actually be liable because the party from 19th july any whip any order everything i have violated because i am not the party from 19th july and therefore malus i am liable to something or from actually logically speaking from the origin therefore malus this election election huh? and malus it would have the strange effect of a election of mr udav thakre in 2000 2018 january would also go without there being a fresh election and seating him everything will go malus no adjudication by the mere act of recognition relating back either to 1990s or to 2000 and uh, malus 19th of july or to 23 Well, uh, I mean, twenty-first uh, of June. Well, there would be well, it's chaos. The consequences, well, it's are, and apart from the fact, well, that this is clearly textually not well, it's intended by the symbols order. The fourth and the last, I mean, under this head, I'm not on the next one. Under this head, it would also destroy not collateral damage, well, it's major direct damage. It would destroy the relating back, which is held by a lot of the Rajendra Rana. Now, note this, well, note this. not a single judgment even of any high court leave aside supreme court says that the election commission will relate back a constitution bench has held the field for very long saying a disqualification 10th schedule order relates back if your lordship were today to do this your lordship would be giving primacy to a order under a symbols order with any judicial precedent not saying so versus a constitutional provision already held by a constitution bench to relate back and your lordships cannot reconcile a relation back of disqualification with a relation back of the ec it can't be reconciled today malus suppose tomorrow the speaker disqualifies mr abc it is common ground by rajendra rana and many other cases it relates back to malus uh, june 23 uh, 22 But there cannot be disqualification because by then your lordship malus also would be applying a EC order retroactively. Therefore, malus, your lordship already has jurisprudence and a precedent. Prospective, according to you. Right. Then, malus, the fifth aspect is this political party and legislative party. Yes. Now, malus, F is a very important part. Actually, it goes to the root. This is the political party versus legislative party debate, but from an angle different than Mr. Sibbles. The tenth schedule. defines a legislature party in terms of a political party that is plus conclusive i say according to me i may be wrong it's conclusive legislature party is defined in terms of the political party i've quoted the definition and malus your lordship is concerned with the whip whip is peculiarly a political party activity